welcome back. Today's uh, little lesson is focused on harmony and uh, improvisation. The harmonic foundation of improvisation is what we would describe as a chord progression. In the piece I just played you, the chord progression began in the key of G and then moved down chromatically from G to F sharp to F natural and at the end an E chord. And in this case I put an E seventh chord in there. And that particular chord uh, made us feel as if we needed to hear a chord that followed it. We wouldn't have ended the song there. We would have expected it went from this chord to something in A. Circle of fifths, E seventh would go to A, or potentially A seventh is what happens. And A seventh would make us feel like we need to go to D seventh, which is five tones lower than A. And D7 makes us feel like we need to go to five tones lower than D, which is G. And more than once in my classes, I've talked about how oftentimes our chord progressions involve, at some point or another, the circle of fifths. So to review, we went down chromatically. E7, A7, D7, and G. And after that, there was another chord progression that brought us back. Uh, could, you could have just, the composer could have just left it there. Now, the interesting thing is that in songs, uh, melodies are oftentimes copyrighted because they're very distinctive. And they're what we, you know, if someone says, hey, can you sing me happy birthday? Well, they don't sing the chords. They sing the melody. Yeah. Uh, and so you can be sure that in terms of copyrights, the chords themselves are oftentimes less uh, the factor than the melody. Yeah. Okay. In this particular uh, piece, I'm not telling you the name of it yet, but I will eventually. We have a chord regression that we could use whether uh, we keep to the same melody or not. And the aspect of improvisation can unfold in a variety of different ways. One, it can be focused around the melody. Maybe you've got a tune like uh, Ode to Joy. to make that melody sound a little bit different. So instead of playing, you play. Now in that, you might have been able to hear a little bit of Ode to Joy. Let me try that. So the first thing that we need to be thinking about when we examine uh, improvisation uh, related to harmony is what chord tones or what scales would apply. So if we're doing a G chord, these three notes here would be G, B, and D. So if we played any of those three notes that would harmonize with the chord. We could do a scale as well and if we did something of that sort we could play the notes G, A, B, C, D. G, B, D would still be in there, but we would be filling the notes in. And of course, we could go the opposite direction. This piece is in a jazz style, so it's very uncommon to hear just a G chord or just a C chord. So usually we'd expect maybe there would be a seventh or a sixth or a ninth, something that would add one more tone. So if we did that, if we added, say, a sixth, we could go up to the note E. Or if we were arpeggiating the chord, we could include the note E. Yes? If we 
repeated the same idea on the next chord, which may be written as an F sharp seventh chord, we would have an E in there. And if we went to the next chord, we could either use E flat or uh, E natural. E natural would be an F major seventh chord. E flat would be a dominant seventh chord. And then the next chord after that is an E seventh chord. Any of those chords could have also been filled in with a scale. So it's given us some ideas right now of how we could approach the beginning of this piece. So if we were just doing an accompaniment, we would probably be just doing those block chords. Yes? But if I wanted to, I could create a little bit of a melody using those tones. And if I'm using the shape, of the G chord here and I was arpeggiating it, I could do a simple P I M A M I and I would have Yes, you got the idea. So all I did in this particular case was arpeggiate the chords. Now one of the things that can be really helpful in creating a great improvisational uh, melody is examine the melody of the song. So uh, I confess that I borrowed this chord progression from the song Confess, which was written by Doherty and Reynolds. Okay, well, the, how did the melody go in this? Good question. It went something like this. Okay, so what we heard in the melody was, it's kind of a scale. it up an octave. Right. And the second time it'll be uh, yeah. So the one difference between the first A and the second A is the last note will end on G, which makes it sound as if we really did have a sense of a conclusion. Okay, so let's take a look at the second line. The second line of the song is, or the next four bars of the song, goes A7, D7, and then G. Okay, so that's following the circle of fifths from the E7. Seventh. E7, seventh, A7, seventh, D7, seventh, and G. You could do a particular kind of scale all mixolydian. In a mixolydian scale, we lower the seventh note of the scale. So whenever we see a dominant seventh chord, we could do that. We could start on the note E for the E seventh and do the same scale. I'm going to just do a scale in this position. So as I do that, I can make sure that I've used a C sharp and a D natural. Okay and that will keep me in the key of A. Now if I go to the next one, which is an A seventh chord, I do the same thing, except this time I'd make sure that I was playing uh, not a G sharp, but a G natural. If I took that same shape and I brought it all the way down here, it would look the exactly the same. And if I did the same thing for the D seventh chord, I go to the seventh fret. So the fingering that I just did is fingering that we could use for mixolydian mode. Now, would that be the best choice for this? Maybe or maybe not. We may want not to have these big leaps, but let me just kind of give you an idea of what would happen if we did that. If we did the first three 
measures and we arpeggiated them. But when we got to the E7 chord, or better yet, when we got to the A7 chord, we started to do scales and mixolydian mode. Let's see what happens. So, first four bars, we will do just arpeggiated. sort of worked, didn't it? And I could have gone the other direction as well. Could I have fingered the scale in one position? Yes, but then I'd need to know what notes I'm playing. So in an A, a mixolydian scale, which complements the A seventh chord, because it lowers the seventh note a half step starting on A. If I did that, I just need to remember to play a G natural in the key of G, because the D7 chord would be the 5 chord in the key of G, I would use a C natural. And if I was looking at the key of C major, and I'm playing a G7, I would have no sharps at all. So that would sound maybe potentially going from A, and if I was coming down, and this time I was going to not play C sharp, but C natural, If I went up, but I played an F natural, and after that we've got a B flat a diminished chord, an A minor seventh chord, and a D seventh chord. Okay, so we'll take, call, tackle that next. So. Um, what I'm presenting to you is some solutions that you could start to experiment with. One, let's just review. You could take a look at the melody and see, did I use this melody but make some changes? Like, If I'm doing the same thing, but maybe I go down instead of going up. Okay, and what I did there was I stopped using eighth notes. I kind of imitated a little bit of the melody for eighth notes and two quarter notes. And the second line, I could pick whatever note is a chord tone and make it uh, more jagged. So there I went from, from C sharp to A, and the other one went from D to A, and then I leaped up uh, a fifth and a sixth. So again, that is a choice when you're doing the improvisation. So when you practice, how do you, how do you practice this? Well, what I would recommend doing is first take a look at every one of the chords that is in this piece this, as a chord progression and see if you can finger it as a chord and see how that works. One, as a shape. Okay, that makes it pretty easy, but also as if it was occurring in a scale. So if I imagine I was in first position, that could have been. Now here, I'd have to go to there. And of course, I'm fingering it different because I'm thinking of like a scale. And the next one. Some of it kind of similar. And by doing that, I can also decide if I wanted to make uh, any of those notes to fill them in, as we would if we were creating a scale-like figure. Okay, so in the scheme of things, we also could consider what would happen if we were thinking like a bass musician, <clears throat> either a bass player or a bass guitar. Well, we could do the same thing. And if you 
took a look at one of my earlier classes on note reading and intervals like thirds, you could see how you could create the same idea in a scale. So let me show you. The, the G major scale in the first octave going from the sixth string up to the fourth string looks like this. Yeah. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. But if I take just the notes that are part of a G chord, I would find that would be G, B, and D. And if I wanted to add E, I could add that and that would be over here. So that'd be G, B, D. And then if I take the next chord, which is an F seventh chord, okay, that was the same top note because the, the E natural would be. And the next one would be F. And here I could make it E flat or I could make it E natural, depending on whether I want to make it a, a major seventh or a dominant seventh. The last one. Wow. And then A would be A, C sharp, E, and G. D would be D, F sharp, and C. And G would be G, B, D, F. Probably in this case, because the melody notes in E, we would make it a G6. So that would have been... Yeah. So what would the song sound like if we did that? A one, two, three, four... because I didn't do the diminish. If I was doing that, I would, I could just finger the chord. And I get there. A couple more things to focus in on in this particular chord progression that is part of that song, Confessing. One is that we have what we call kind of a turnaround a chord progression that brings us right back to where we started. So when we get to a measure seven, instead of the piece ending there on the G chord, they put two chords for every measure instead of one. And so you have a G chord. This is a C sharp diminished seventh chord. So you have B flat, C, E, and G. And then the next chord after that is an A minor seventh chord. So you have an A minor chord and a D seventh chord. So that turnaround and then you're back to the beginning of the of the next A section. So this piece, uh, both in the uh, in measure eight seven and eight has that turnaround in the, uh, the 15th and 16th bar of the piece. It just goes from a G to a C minor to a G. Then after that, the B section follows the circle of fifths again. We have a G seventh, and then we have a C major seventh chord, an A seventh, and a D seventh. So you can actually finger that again. seventh chord I would do yeah and then we have an A seventh chord and a D seventh chord and again you can finger those chords or you can finger them as scales you could fill that in like
I hope that uh, this little video was helpful to you to get some ideas of strategy in terms of practice and uh, learning how a chord progression can inform you about how to improvise and also learning your scales in particular the two we covered today the major scale which was G and the mixolydian scale which lowers the seventh note scale for all the dominant seventh chords E7, A7, D7, G7 and I hope that helps give me a send me a note if you have questions and best wishes on your practice <laughs>